I was diagnosed with CLL. Can you hear me all right? I'll take your can. I was diagnosed with CLL in early 2011, age 57, having had a bad DVT the previous year, which led to ongoing problems and more blood tests. Um, at the time of diagnosis, I had an additional blood test which came back with a good prognosis. Later in 2011, I had another DVT in the other leg with the result that I was put on blood thinners for the rest of my life. <clears throat> I have continued to have outpatient appointments with the haematology department, brackets, 4th Valley Royal Hospital in Larbert, usually at six or 12 month intervals with bloods taken a week prior. During all this time, there's been negligible progression with only a small rise in the white blood cell count in recent years. During the COVID pandemic, appointments continued by telephone and face-to-face -face resumed earlier this year. Uh, I feel I've been extremely well served by the haematology department over the years, not least because they've been able to assist with other blood-related issues, which we've already heard a little bit about, um, even though I can hardly be a high-priority patient. So I'd like to spend a few minutes just talking about some of these other issues. And again, we've heard some of this. Firstly, tiredness, fatigue and breathlessness, which eventually, I think it was around about 2017, resulted in a finding of anemia, extremely low levels of iron and ferritin. And after I asked the question, was told it was simply iron deficient anemia rather than any of the other variants. Iron tablets proved problematic, and between 2018 and 2020, I ended up with four infusions of intravenous iron at the day medicine unit. This seems to have stabilised the situation with acceptable readings for iron and ferritin since then, and a modest change to my diet with an increase in the amount of red meat eaten, I'm afraid to say. Hope that doesn't offend anyone which had been quite low. I hadn't be, I'd realised I hadn't been eating a lot of red meat. Uh, and it might be worth saying that being diagnosed as anemic is not necessarily on its own an indication that treatment for CLL is required. When initially found to be anemic, I was booked in for colonoscopy and endoscopy to check for possible internal bleeding, standard practice. Unfortunately, the results came back negative. However, I had, just a bit like Kath here, I had had previous experience of both procedures. So in the period 2012 to 2017, two of the biennial bowel screening samples came back positive. Uh, an examination revealed and removed two and then one polyp from my bowel. Bowel screening tests since then have been negative, thank goodness, because I don't really like that, those, that procedure. Um, and the earlier endoscopy procedure ended up with a finding of gastric helicobacter and a course of antibiotics. Again, no subsequent issues, thank goodness. Um, there's probably a lot of other things I could say, but it's just a short message. I guess the message here is that although we may have CLL, we are complex biochemical factories and many other things can and do happen which we also have to cope with. And compared to others, I realize I'm very lucky and relatively well and still able to be active in the garden, monitoring our local wildlife, etc. The one thing I can't change is getting older. Thank you.